So here's what we're going to get for this one. I don't have a full size sketch of this one. Um, uh, but we're gonna, this is easy enough. There's measurements, we'll, we'll, when we draw these roads and these markers, we can measure and kind of get an idea where to start. But it doesn't have to be as precise as the last painting we did with all the little details. Um, but basically we've got, the idea behind this painting is the, it's sort of a study of how colors work. We're, uh, we're gonna look at how this light purple right here, purple and yellow being opposite colors, how these two play with each other. And how this light purple in here, even though it doesn't look like it, is the exact color of these trees right here. That look white against this yellow. It's kind of creates an optical illusion. So we're going to start with this color. And we know that our, um, you know, we're going to have basically road towards the bottom here. Um, our sky is kind of going to be this section right in here. I'm not even going to try to sketch it. But to start with, we're just going to put this purple color in the background. And it is purple. Um, this print out doesn't look exactly like the color of the original painting, which I was going to bring, but I ended up selling it, so I couldn't bring it. But And the colors on here don't match that even a little bit. So you kind of got to use your imagination. Whatever color you start with, whatever you mix to make this purple, remember what you did because you're going to use that on your trees. But it's pretty much just going to be a gesso, ultra, ultramarine blue with a little touch of uh, magenta. That's way too much magenta. It gives us a kind of a purple color. And you can put the tiniest amount of burnt umber in it to give it a little more of a gray, a gray color. So it will be so, quite so vibrant. But that's pretty much the color right there. It's it's very purple. Okay. Again, it looks a little more purple than what the picture is here. Just put a little more blue in it. That's okay that it's not exactly that. But like I said, remember what you used for that. And this is going to be probably two coats because it's such a light color. It's not going to cover very well. And a lot of this is going to be showing. So we'll probably just do uh, put a coat on, smooth it out, let it dry and then come back and do another coat of it. So if you don't get the color perfect on the first run, you can always tweak it a little bit on the next pass. I'm just gonna kind of scrub that down into the canvas. This is our underpainting for this side of the painting. I wanna make sure to come far enough in that my trees will have something to overlap. And anytime you are painting to an edge, soften that edge so it'll be easy to paint over. Right, so I'm just going to smooth that out a little. I do want to come um, all the way down, make a little bit more of that color. Close to it anyway. I do want to go all the way down to the bottom. It can get a little darker down here. That's fine because this is going to be covered up with some darker stuff. This is a you know, five to ten minute process right here. Not a whole lot to this. Like I said, two coats. Put the first one on, smooth out the brush strokes, let it dry, and do another coat on it. But I, I want to leave this area up here white because that, that yellow is going to have to cover that. But I want to go ahead and cover the bottom. Soft edges. Yeah, that's our underpainting for this for that side of it. Let's go ahead and get that far. And we'll two coats and then we'll start up. Next thing we're going to do is put these uh, ghost trees back here. We got a little bit of a, a tree line. Kind of, I folded this to see where halfway was. It's just below halfway. And then these tree trunks here. I'm going to use a fan brush. You can use whatever you want for this, but the color is the same color you just made, but less white. So I'm going to put a little blue, magenta, a little touch of brown. Some white, but not quite as much. You don't want you don't want it to be drastically different than what was behind there. It does need to show up. So I'd say halfway is about right there. So I'm gonna go just below halfway. I'm gonna kind of go across here with it, and that's still a little that's a little darker than I want to be. Use 
use this fan brush. I'm just going to kind of get some of the paint off of it so I can have a, a little bit more water so I can let the ends of it open up a little. Up here. No real design to this. This is just way off in the distance, the tops of some brush trees, little stuff back in the background. Happy little trees. Yeah, happy stuff. But even though a lot of this is going to be covered up, I'll come all the way over with it. But you don't need to make some brown and clean those tissues. All right, he'll figure it out. All right, and I'll come on down with that. It's okay that it's kind of splotchy. That's that's actually a good thing. I don't care that it's not all the same color and consistency. You don't need to be smooth like a wall. It's not grass. I'm not trying to do a grass texture. This is just brush, trees, but way off in the distance. So we'll fuzz out the tops of it a little bit. But at least it's got some texture. If it does get covered up, it'll be, if it shows through, it'll look okay. Okay, so there's that. And then there is the trees in the, the tree trunks in the background. Nothing to this. Just make sure you got plenty of water. I'm using this dagger brush if you feel better with a, a uh, liner brush. But the thing is, don't get these thick. These front trees are going to be half inch to an inch thick, and so those don't need to be even half of that. They need to be real thin. Now I'm using this dagger, but I'm only going to use the very tip of it. I'll make sure I get plenty of water. And I'll probably do some of them with my liner brush as well, just to, just to do them. They are going to be thin at the top. Same color. And a little thicker at the bottom. Same color. And they just vanish into this bottom part here. Um, actually, kind of want them to disappear into the top of it. Yeah, that. So, as many of these as you want to do. And if they don't even go all the way down, that's fine. If you just have some that just show up just a little bit like that, that's fine. Um, just as long as they vary in distance and in thickness, so as long as it doesn't look like there's a pattern to them, you know. You can do these upside down if you're more comfortable doing that. They're not symmetrical. No, you don't, don't want to make gel, you know, gel bars. Pants post. Pants post, right. If you, uh, Brush starts getting dry, you can kind of just whip a few in there real quick like that. Okay, little ghostly things in the background. They don't need to be too perfect. It's like the worst thing they can be is perfect. Get a little bit more down the bottom here. So the distance, it's just you're looking deep into a distance, you know, a bunch of trees. I really don't want much detail here at all. As fuzzy as I can. Okay. Alright. And when that dries, it'll blend a little better. Uh, but let's get that far and we'll start with some yellow nails. So if you take your if you take your picture and fold it and fold it again that way, get some creases in it, and then do the same thing that direction, it kind of gives you a grid to see where these markers are. And if you look, the trees come all the way out to here. This is the, if you were to measure that, that's 
on the canvas that's four inches down, five inches in to that little point right there. So the trees kind of come out to about right there. They go in to about the center of the canvas, which is right there. So if you mark, tiny mark there, tiny mark there, and if you look down here, this intersection is where the road kind of meets. So if you make those three markers, that'll tell you kind of how to shape your area here. The, um, this yellow, as you know, it's hard to get that to cover anything. So we're gonna put white down first. So what we're gonna do is kind of paint all this in, in white. And I, I had to go over this way intentionally because you are gonna leave some little holes and things showing. You're really gonna paint it like it's trees. Um, you know, have the, have the leaves, the textures of it, but just in white. And then we're gonna come back and kind of colorize it. So thinking about how it's shaped and don't, don't you know, obviously don't make it too robotic. And we're gonna start with some, get some paint on the canvas. And as I come out towards the edge, I'll let the brush give me some texture. Give me a lot more water than that. And it's not gonna cover completely. Some of that purple will show through and that's fine. See how that works there. So that gives it some, that purple showing through actually gives it some texture, so that's okay. All the way over to the, to my mark there. And I'm using this um, soft bristle fan brush. Does it have to be a soft bristle? It don't, but the stiff one makes it look like grass more. Okay. This one lets you kind of twist and dance around and give you some different textures. It's what I like, but whatever you can get your trees to look like trees with. So those are just looking like leaves? Yeah, we're just giving this the, the shape, the overall shape of all the trees. And they kind of come in at the bottom here. So then this bottom part where they're where it's kind of brushed growing up out of the ground looks a little different. It's going to kind of come up with some some limbs that kind of go upward. And that's going to go out to our point here. Of course the point to doing this is that we're going to cover it up. So we're going to paint yellow over it, and this next next step, we're going to need it to go quick to make the yellows fade down into the other colors. So, this is your chance to really take your time and design where you want the leaves and things to be. Because with the next step, we're going to have to move quickly, and we're not going to be able to take the time to make the edges as pretty necessarily. We're going to be throwing in the paint pretty quick. But I want to go ahead and cover up all of my all of my purple over here. And at this point, I could use a bigger brush and just cover it. Um, I do like to have a little texture in it just because if it shows through, it'll look like this guy's showing through. You definitely don't want any hard lines on anything. But I'm really just covering up the purple now. Okay. So that's pretty much where we're going to get to uh, on this next step. We may, if we have time, and I do want to wait till everybody gets this part done before we move on to the to the yellow. We do need to do that together. So that's just thin white. It's just gesso, and I'm I'm thinning it to make it have the texture that I want with my brush. As I get back over here, where I'm just trying to cover, I'm gonna put it on thick and just move it around. Let's talk about these colors real quick. And I got the color the color chart here. You can look at. If you look at this, it looks totally different from here, but these colors were pulled directly out of this picture. Um, that pale green, and actually these are all the same, it's just I meant to cut these in half, and just so that's all that's relevant of it right there. That light, lightest color there is the lightest yellow, and you see how it's almost green. Then this color in the middle, the bulk of these trees is going to be kind of this tone, 
gets darker as it goes down, darker even still as it goes down. So let's look at how to make these colors. And then down at the road, it's even, even the darkest. So um, start with that mid color. This is medium yellow. I know we usually use light yellow. We're going to start with medium this time. And this is burnt sienna. A couple of colors we don't use very often. Those two together, and it's more yellow than sienna, it's kind of going to give us this shade we want. It's not, it may need just a touch of the burnt umber to make it not quite so orange. Okay, see how that did? That gave it just a little bit more of a brown color, a little less orange. That's kind of that color. Maybe even a little more brown. I, mean, I have blue here too, because blue is the opposite of purple, basically. I mean, blue is the opposite of, uh, well, the purple would be the opposite of yellow. So adding blue to the yellow is kind of like adding a shadow to it. So you can add a little bit of that, but if you get too much of that, it's going to go green on you. So that's about that color right there. Lightening it with gesso makes it the color above it. And you may have to go just a tad more yellow in that one. You just kind of got to play with these colors. And I would say make some ahead of time like this, especially these first two, because you don't want to have even transition. You don't want to have, here's my light yellow, there's my dark yellow, this is the day. You know, you don't want to have bands of color. You want an even, seamless transition. But don't think of this necessarily as trees right now. Right now, it's just a fade of color from light to dark. And this mid-tone, let's see, this color is kind of going to be around this level of it. And as it gets down further, it's going to get darker. So the best way to do this, maybe just to do it on canvas. I don't want to use a bigger brush, too. The best way to do it might just be to mix the color on canvas. And it may take a few coats of this, which is why I don't care about brush strokes or anything right now. I don't want hard edges though. Hard edges are hard to cover up. So as I come up with that, get a little more of the gesso in it and a little more of the yellow. Do it really quickly because it's wet and I'm going to blend them because I don't want those perfect shades there. Transitioning down, I'm going to add a couple more of each of the browns to that yellow, maybe even a touch of that blue as we come down to get more into this color. I'm not even trying to get out to the edges yet. Alright, and then if I go I'm going to get to the bottom go even darker like this. Not getting too close to the edge, not getting too, um, you know, not, I don't want to leave those bands of color in. So I put the paint on with that. You can come back with another brush. I still have a little bit of each color and just want to quickly do some kind of textural blending, I guess, between those colors. Just to hide the lines. Go even lighter at the top here. Yeah, I like that. And it's going to take a couple coats of this. To soften these edges, I'm going to let my brush kind of run out of paint. Out towards the edges of them, the paint, the, the color can get lighter. At, like it's getting lighter as it goes up, but it's also getting lighter as it goes out towards the edge. So I'm not going all the way out to the edge yet, but just kind of, you know, kind of close. We'll detail that edge later. Mainly up before it dries, I want to make sure that my transitions are smooth. So you're going dark, then lighter, lighter, lighter on the end? Yes, lighter as it goes up, and yellower as it goes up. It's transitioning in the, the hue and in the value of it. So why does this one look a little darker? Yeah, it, it can, and we're okay. going to come back and put some more texture. If it's splotchy, it's okay. okay. Spots of color here and there is okay. 
Um, just in general, when you step back from it, I want to see it get gradually lighter, darker as it goes down. And if you work this too long, you're going to regret it. You start pulling paint. If it starts pulling up on you, just move on. Come back to it later after it dries. You really got to work quick on this. Down here, I'm going to come back into that later and do a lot more detailed uh, color stuff on it. Come down. It's almost pure uh, burnt umber as you get to the bottom of that. Sienna or umber? Umber. Okay. There's some sienna in that middle color, but as it goes down, it gets to the darker, to the darker umber color. Okay, and we'll go that far. We'll we'll have we'll put the road and the grasses and stuff in front of that. But when you get so far, step back from it before it dries, and see if there's any weird areas that need to blend better. Uh, so, think y'all can do? Oh, all right, here we are. <laughs> Tonight we're going to go a little further with this. Uh, background mass of trees back here um, what we need to do is kind of make some you can't really tell it much in this smaller picture but kind of make this look a little bit more like trees and less like texture so we do some individualized kind of clumps of limbs and leaves and things in there and then before we're done tonight I want to go ahead and have the, the uh, tree trunks at least the, the main trunk of the trees we don't have to have them completely finished I have them in place and then so we can start working on the ground here first. So we're gonna do the background first, then the trees, then work on this bottom part, then we'll come back and detail the trees. And then we'll do this last part here in the road. Um, so same colors we had before. This is gonna be, um, but basically you just gotta think of this as just a mass of trees. You don't want too much detail in it because it is kind of in the background, but just wanna pull out some, some individual, um, you know, clumps of leaves, some individual limbs. So let's start with a color. You can kind of just make a color and then see where it fits. Let's so see, that's about right in there. So I'll go into the darker color with that. Get a little more water so my brush will act right. This is a this brush ain't broke in good yet. <laughs> So with the lighter shade, I'm going to go in here in the darker area, and not too much. I just want to give a little bit more individual texture here, and I don't want to lose my my overall gradient by doing this of color. But I'm also going to bring that out a little bit. This white on the tips, we don't have to cover that up completely. Um, a little bit of white showing on the end will be okay because we're going to have some of that glowing you know, stuff at the end, we're going to have the light glowing through there anyway. But up in this top part, yeah, I need to go a little bit lighter than what's behind there <coughs> to get my, get my limbs going up here. So yeah, this is not going to be the whole thing. And I'm not actually just drawing, you know, trees inside here. It's just little clusters of variation. Put a little paint on the brush and kind of work it till it goes away. But each each time I'm going to carry that out a little bit towards that edge a little bit more too. But it's okay if the white shows behind there. It's not going to take a whole lot of this. So just go a, a hair lighter than what's behind it. And I'm going to do maybe a little bit over on this side, but mostly focusing on the the right side. Are we doing anything at the bottom? Not yet. We we're going to go all the way down there. I'm going to come down there with the darker. So as I come down with the darker shade, but slightly lighter than what's there, yeah, so like that would be the texture for this area. And it's just, you know, it's just about making some individual leaves and things in the background so little limbs and leaves to make it look like this is a cluster of trees just to make a little more detail in your texture 
while it's wet, you can also, may not show up really good, but scratch a few limbs in there if you want to. Ain't showing up at all. <laughs> That's probably even enough. You don't need much, just some here and there, just to break it up. Especially if yours is really smooth and transitioned really neatly, then break it up a little more. Um, you can go dark into light, light into dark. Could have a little patch up here that gets a little darker, maybe. Um, but just make sure you don't lose your overall gradient, you know. Uh, I like that. I like that it looks like it gets darker as it goes down. Just a little here and there. And focusing too on this, the outside limbs. And we'll, we'll have an opportunity to do some more to this, this little detail stuff out here when we get towards the end. But this is just going to get, you know, 90% complete. On the on the background trees, and not worry too much about this down here yet. It's going to have some different colors and some different things in it. But we'll put it in after the fact. So the reason I want to do this like this is I want to have the trees go up, so we can put all this foliage in the front ground in the foreground that'll be in front of those trees. So we're not worried too much about the bottom yet. Just you know, texture and make it look more like a tree. So everything's a shade lighter than what you're going for. Right, so now we got to put some of these uh, tree trunks in. We want it to be several, right? You don't have to be exactly what's on here by any means. But we want to make sure that some of them are further back, some of them are closer, some are thinner, some are thicker. Now these birch trees are pretty straight. They, you know, I always say don't paint telephone poles, but these are pretty, pretty solid straight trees a lot of times. I'm going to start by just making some of the color that we started with, with our purple over here. Get some of that. Ooh, I got some yellow. Yellow, I think that's okay. Not enough to matter. That's pretty close right there. Now I've got a pretty big brush, but I'm going to do it sideways like this. Um, I'm going to start by doing some thinner ones that are kind of further back. And if this is nice and dry, you can put these on. If you don't like it, you can wipe them off. But you know the rule, they got to be thicker at the bottom or at least they can't be thinner at the bottom right now that color you see how that like messes with your eyes when you look at that color that purple against the yellow that's that's by design that's kind of why I wanted to do this painting just thinner ones and then we'll come back and do some thicker ones. The further back ones are a little darker. Right? Yeah, these are these are the further back ones. They're kind of the straight purple that's over here, same color that's over here. And maybe do one more thin one of those, kind of right in here. Just a hair thicker, maybe. All right. So then, can I have that just so up there real quick? Mine's got yeah. So I'm going to go just a bit wider, just a little, to come a little closer. And these will be maybe a little bit thicker too, the trees themselves. This is a, just an angle brush, I don't know, it's just one I found. You can use a flat brush or a dagger or whatever you got. I just wanted something a little wider. Just make sure you don't have prison bars. Perfect prison bars, you know. I like to have. I like to have a little bit of a cluster. A couple of them that kind of join at the bottom or get close together at the bottom sometimes. We'll clean up the edges of them later. We're going to put highlight side and shadow side on them. Alright, let's see what else. A little, a little bit more up front here. Angle. 
perfectly okay if they overlap each other? Yeah, I think we'll do wood more because I don't want the thick one to be the last one on the right. I think we'll come back and do one more dark one kind of over here. Okay, they're a little shaky. So we're going to get those put in just like that. Just one coat. We'll come back. We'll do highlights, shadows. But we want to get those in place so we can go ahead and do the uh, the bottom part of this next. Okay. Go ahead and do that part. we got to make these trees round. So we're going to do a shadow side and a light side for them. I made a color that's just a shade darker than my... It's more like, like this color now. You know, the darker shade of the purple that we had here. Because you see when you put these on here, they look white. They were not. You saw what color they were. They were this purple color. When you put them against that yellow, it looks white. So this looks too dark, but it's not. I promise you. Um, what I want to do is pretty much darken the bottom of the trees and up the left side. Doesn't have to be all the way. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is just the shadow side of the tree. We'll put some paint on there and then kind of smear it. A little just a little bit of darkness on that left side and notice I'm doing this on the darker trees first but I also want them darker towards the bottom just on one side just on the left side and these up here that are so skinny they don't really matter as much but mainly trying to stick to that left side the lights come from over there. Alright. Oh, Alright. One more. Is this the last step? It can be. Um, <laughs> what kind of answer is that? Well, I don't mean to get to see the brightest. Your world, you can quit if you want me. Whatever you want me. So then the next, next it's back to the mid-tone color, the one we painted the background trees with, to do the shadow side on the lighter trees. And you can finger paint these like I'm doing, or you can do two, uh, two brushes and kind of make that, that makes a little it smoother. I'll go ahead and show you the next part too, and then that can be it for tonight. I'm trying to get into the Braves game. I'm trying to do oh, good to my morning. teacher. We came to paint. We want to get our money's worth. Oh, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> started. Y'all seen that uh, unfinished painting in the woods right now? Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start selling unfinished paintings. After the way they've been painted. That's what you have to do, right? They're just rocks to be the bee thing. To me, and the last you had dark purple all in the brush. Started down this one. All right, so making that left side darker is the first step. And I'm rushing through this, but y'all we will let this be the last step, but I do want to show you the other parts of this. So you've got a dark side, but you can also, and you may not need this on all of them, but you can also come back with a light side, but still as light as I'm going to get is this light purple that I was using before. I'm not going to get lighter. And that's only going to be, really only want to do the highlight side on the frontmost trees. I don't really want the highlight on all of them. 
Maybe show over the top. Yeah. A little bit more at the top, and I'll clean up that edge in a minute too. The edge of my tree got a little weird. A chance to clean that up. These two are kind of prominent, so I'm spending a little more time on those. I think as far as we'll go for that part, I may come back and do a little more of that, but I'll show you the next part. So once that's done, and I'm going to make some black. All right. This is just burnt umber, ultramarine blue. Just going to make as close to black as you can get. And I'm just using this little dagger brush. This works pretty good for this. It's pretty flat. The bottoms of these trees have a lot of black at the bottom. Now I'm focusing on that left side to start with. See how those, those bands kind of wrap around a little bit? From the, uh, so from the left side and then from the right side. Now the bottoms of the trees get pretty black as they go down. As you go up the tree, it gets more sparse. There's a little more individual things. We'll do those later. I just want to get the bottom parts done so we can go ahead and paint. The next step we're going to do, first step next week, will be we'll paint the, uh, the grasses and things in the front of these. So I just want to have the bottoms of the trees done. And you can look at the picture and see these are not, there's no exactness to this. And a lot of this is going to be covered up. They just where the this black is where the bark peels off, and then it gets it kind of turns black underneath where the where the tree is exposed, and it's a lot more. If you look at pictures of birch trees, it's a lot more prominent at the bottom, like this, and it kind of gets you know more sparse as it goes up. So we'll do that, light and dark, and then come back and put your black just like that on the just the bottoms of the trees. You just did dark. Well, what are you doing? First thing we're going to do tonight is. Draw in, kind of sketch in where this land is going to be. I mentioned I folded this so you can see that it's the bottom of these trees is about a quarter of the distance up, which for us would be about four inches. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, but the tree line, the bottom of the trees, kind of comes straight out to a point, which we've already kind of established. That's going to end, it's going to actually disappear behind this other section over here. From that point, though, and that's, we'll, we'll call that kind of right in here. From that point, there's going to be the top of the land, and then there's a little bit of a kind of like a little, I don't know if you call it like a little cliff or a little, you know, yeah, where the ledge where it comes down. Thank you. And then the road, we'll paint the road into here. Now, later on, we'll come back and put our um, little island over here and the grasses that go on this side of the road and the trees that go up this side. For now, I want to get all of this in and the road in and finish up the edges of these trees and the black marks on these trees. I want to get all that done tonight. So I think we can do that. It'll be fairly straightforward. First thing I'm going to do a couple steps at a time. Um, first of all, I'm just going to block in the colors for this bottom. Um, and really all you want is some dark, some dark colors in the bottom. I'm going to go with some of this, some of each brown, maybe even a touch of that yellow in there. Because as it was getting light at the top and getting darker as it goes down, it's kind of going to continue that onto the land. But I just want to kind of block in a color here. We're going to cover this up with grasses. Doesn't matter that it's not uh, solid or, you know, that it has much shape to it. This is, is going this way, so do it. That's going to be the biggest challenge. This part is making this look flat and not, you know, having some weird shapes to it. There will be grasses and things here covering this up. It's going to come out to that point. <laughs> then our um, what did you call that? A ledge. Yes, ledge. Yeah is going to come down from that. It, it is darker kind of at the top. See how that works? Make enough paint there. So it is darker. 
<laughs> kind of darker at the top. It's going to kind of pull down. If you can, even though this is kind of just blocking in, your brush strokes can still mm -hmm. give you an idea of what it's going to shape like. Uh, obviously, it's going to get smaller as it goes away. And it doesn't matter if that goes all the way off because that's going to come be covered up completely. But down here, it's definitely larger, thicker drop off down here. And then the road itself, the base color for it, I'm just going to do a grayish color to start with and sort of just put in just some area there. But that's going to, we'll work on the transition from edge of this to the road and we'll work on the the colors and the shadows and everything in this road but for now I'm just covering up this purple putting some paint on the canvas more of that going we're going to put the dead leaves and all that stuff on here later right now this is just blocking in and this we will have a lighter color coming off of this and a darker color for the shadow so this is in no way final so that's a mid-tone yeah it's just a mid-tone for it just trying to cover the purple up and if i my brush strokes could, could even go that way you know, as far as keeping everything looking flat all that over there is going to be black anyway <laughs> Once that dries, we'll do another layer or two on that. But in the meantime, while it's drying, back up on these trees. Some of you have already kind of gone ahead and done some of the the um, the black marks on the tree. And we don't have a lot of birch trees around here, but uh, what this is is that bark is white. And as the bark peels off, it kind of grows that direction. So as it peels off, the underneath where the bark is kind of gets black and rotten. The, wood kind of looks rotten underneath it. Not rotten, but it looks black. Um, so when you're making these, they're not dots and they're not uniform and you don't want to really have any pattern to them. Right. Some of them will go all the way across because in some places, if you look at real birch trees, they'll be missing entire Sections, section yeah. of bark up missing another tree. Um, so there's, there's starting at the edge, but this is an opportunity to help make the tree kind of look round. So you'll want to put you know, clusters here and there, just a few, few here and there. Don't make it look like tiger stripes, <laughs> necessarily. But um, all the way up the trees this way. As it goes up, there, there, there's fewer, uh, fewer of the marks as they go up. But you do kind of want to give them that roundness as you're putting them on there. Gotcha. Then we'll come back, and I'll, I'll do all of those, probably all the black stuff first. Then we'll come back with, man, let's go ahead and use that same brush. A lighter color. I say lighter, I don't necessarily want pure white. Dirty it up just a little bit. Especially on the on the highlight side of these, but you might even put a little bit of lighter area just on the top of those, mm -hmm. just to kind of give them a little bit, not all of them, just to give a, a little bit of a texture to where the where the bark is right. peeled up. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to look at, oh, Google it and look at what some pictures of what birch trees look like. Mm -hmm. They've got a, it's a the, bir the bark itself is really white, yeah. but we're not gonna paint a whole lot of white on here for sure. So even in even in uh, how you've got some that are black, it would have just some little white spots in the tree. Would be okay. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do too much of that. You definitely don't want to make it look like tiger stripes or anything <laughs> strange. So let's get the blocked in road and let's kind of finalize the tree trunks. Get them as detailed as you want them, and we'll come back later and do. Uh, we're going to do a little bit more down here and then also in the trees while that's. So I'll show you two steps real quick. Um, next phase on the bottom. We've got kind of basic, uh, kind of got basic colors in blocked in down there, but I want to come in with a little bit of a darker color because I want to have some of that 
yellow or kind of you know almost hay colored dry grasses in the front right there mm -hmm. but in order for that to show up good it needs to be good and dark behind it so i'm going to first make a good dark brown go ahead and put a little bit of that sienna in it too yeah, just to, um i don't know hey, I, I think he told me he wasn't gonna be here tonight. um but this that about that color just something really dark that'll cover the bottom of those trees and I'm going to use my fan brush, but there's not a whole lot of texture just yet. Just going to throw that in. Not going to go all the way down to my uh, dark area. But I do want to soften the top edges of it. So it looks like the grass is kind of growing up over the bottom of those trees. And then when we come back in and put our uh, light colored grasses on top, it'll, it'll show up really good. Same out here, we'll come on out with it. Even though, like I said, a lot of that's gonna be hidden. Yeah, that's about all that really needs right now. Is May that hard even, or a soft brush? sorry? Is that hard? That's a a stiff stiff this is the stiff brush. Yeah. Might even go just a hair darker back in here. Just a hair. Just a hair darker back on that side. Uh, I'll differentiate where that road is. The, um, there's still going to be some, some in between there, the little, the cliff, mm -hmm. if you want to call it that. I keep calling it cliff, whatever, whatever you, <laughs> word you said made more sense. Ledge. Ledge. Ledge, there you go. Mm -hmm. Cliff indicates higher. We'll go with a little <laughs> bit of a, a lighter, a lighter shade of this gray and pull horizontal lines from here. Probably want to go even lighter than that. Let's see. Let's see if I can do that. We're going to do some more texture. This is just another, another, uh, another layer of texture. This would be shadows or you know, where the shadows are falling across the road here. that down from the from the edge there and let it kind of pull out. Now clean all this up later and make it make more sense but for now it's just putting it in. So the light is coming from that side and coming across. So the same for the road. I want my lightest my lightest color would kind of be up there falling across here. You know, if that, that makes sense. And all this over here is going to be covered, so get some good light areas there coming across. Oh, that's going to be covered back to my dark side. In general, though, it's darker on the left. I can blend this better with my when I start putting a little more texture to it. But that's mm -hmm. the basic idea there. I will do some more work on that, but I want to keep that as horizontal as I can, just to let it uh, make it look flat and give the illusion of that road being flat. Mm -hmm. And in general, darker over here than than it is over there. While that's all drying. Now is the time to come back. Now I'm going to work on this bottom part separate. I want that little cluster of trees and things down here to be separate. But looking at the edges of the tree up here, like I said, the light is coming from there and I've got a little bit of my white showing through. But I think I want to add a little more highlight to that. Um, do some of it with my fan brush. I'll do some of it with my liner brush too or a detail brush or whatever you want to use to get the very edges of it but this is going to be a color that is um, almost white I'm going to start with white, white and put a little bit of that yellow in it it's a really pale yellow this is just where the sunlight is 
coming through the, the leaves on the tips of those trees. Put that water down enough that the brush will separate. I've got to break this fan brush in better. <laughs> it is too... Too neat. Too new. <laughs> Just out on the edges here. It's okay that it covers what you have there just a little, but not, you know, not too much. This is just the leaves that are showing, the light is shining through these trees. I do some of it with that brush, but I actually I, do, I like to do a lot more of it with it and, and really get individual you know, glowing, glowing leaves in there like that. See how that does. <laughs> so I'm mainly going to focus this on the this portion of the tree, kind of at the top, along the, the very edges of it. Maybe get a little down in here, just so it doesn't look like that's stopping at the at the first tree line there, and. Uh, as this dries, it'll disappear a little bit more too, and it'll look a little more right. Now this is really watery. Uh, if you're going to do it this way, just watery, and don't think too much about it. Each one don't have to be connected. You don't have to paint individual limbs. Just you know, these are just the the leaves that are catching light. While I'm in that color, you might even use a little bit of that on the front edges of some of these trees that are going to catch a lot of light. You know what I mean? Just in those areas where it's going to be really light. You really want to yeah. accentuate that light coming through there. Yeah. So we're going to work on the road, work on the light while that's dry and kind of do two things at once. So when you work up here for a while, get tired of that, go do some more detailed stuff to the road. Just back and forth. Alright, so we got the dark part. We got the dark part down there. We got some. We put some light grasses in front of it. We'll make those with yellow and sienna, mm -hmm. the burnt sienna. And we'll probably have to put a touch of white in that to get it to show up in front of that dark color. Put some water in here so my brush can separate. That may be a little too dark still. I want to get it more like a, almost like a hay color. Like if you want to pay, it's more yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that's about right, right there. Um, and this is my stiff bristle, stiff bristle brush, and it's it needs to be broken better too. But same kind of thing. We're going to just going to go in front of this darker stuff and let some of this grass land right in there. So this is just a downward stroke that just kind of lets the brush land, makes the bottom of it. And you can see the color changes because it's it's got a lot of water in it, so the color um, changes a little bit based on where it stops. We put it now, on our ledge. I'm coming down too far because I'm going to come back through and wipe that off. Just make sure you're good and dry when you do this. And I want to clean that edge up a little bit. Did you mean to do that? Yeah. Well, I was I was not being careful with it, but because I want to I want to kind of have a good clear edge where this ledge is going to be. And that's just a good way to do it. It's easier than trying to stop right on the edge. So for the ledge, let's talk about the ledge now. A um, little flat brush is good for this. And I will still come back in this in a little while and put some different shades of color, a little lighter colors, pull some individual grasses up to make that look. Let's get like a, a mud color, almost like a red clay. Mm -hmm color if we can come up with something kind of like that and the way I want to do that is with this flat brush I want to give myself just a, a flat surface there and kind of pull it down like that see how that works mm -hmm. right into my road I will leave some places where it has some some black showing through mm -hmm. and some places where it's solid as I come down here it's going to be a little thicker 
and if that color changes slightly that's good that's okay too if it has a variation of color and the color showing through behind it is okay that's that's good that gives me makes it look like I got a lot more colors than I really do and I'm leaving leaving a little dark at the top and we we'll actually come back and add some dark to the top of that as I go down here you don't need to get too carried away with it more or less right in the middle here where it's you know more more clearly defined but I like that it's got some variations of light and dark in it and I'll come back with my really dark, almost black. I got any that's clean enough <laughs> left in here. And just kind of muddy up the top edge of it. So it kind of looks like that the grass tuft kind of hangs over, makes a shadow mm -hmm. over that. Pull some of that down into it as well. Make it a little black here. <laughs> blue but I can kind of thickly cake that up in there it will look good and if some of it comes on down down a little bit that looks good too just that dark edge just that indicates that there's a little bit of a, a ledge there because that can, that's going to give us a place to put some to let our leaves set so we basically set the stage to have a layer here of grasses, then a drop off, then a flat area. Mm -hmm. And once this is all dry, and I'm not going to dry it, we start with a start with a little darker color. But if you use a, a liner brush like this and kind of lay it, you can just kind of touch it flat like that and make these these little leaf shapes, little clusters of leaves here and there, and vary the colors. Some brighter ones, some darker ones some black ones, some really dark ones, you know. But there'll be some leaves down in here of varying shades. See how that works. Keeping them flat like this, I'm always thinking about keeping my road horizontal. You don't want your road to be flowing, you know, sideways. Um, on these, on the little cliff here, you could put a pile of them kind of coming down the down and turn in the corner as they as they flatten out. Maybe you got some that are kind of up in here and you know use it to make that shape. So a variety of different color leaves down here for and we can come back tomorrow I mean next week when we finish up and do some little extra details like that but there's going to be some uh, you know leaf pieces kind of in the bottom of the grasses here. We'll do some extra grasses some of these grasses, especially as I get up towards the uh, up towards the front, some of these are going to be really light and make a color that's almost that light yellow color. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be some of these, especially up here where they catch a lot of sunlight, that mm -hmm. that pull up really bright, you know, up in this area here. But you'll have some of those. If I've got light hitting this tree, then I've probably got some light here. Mm -hmm as well. Those real fine uh, detailed grasses like that makes it look like you have a bunch of them. And if you kind of tap out the bottom of them, it'll make them blend with what's underneath. But I don't want dark and light, just two tones. I want to have several colors of grasses, several shades of that. So I'm going to do a lot of this. And a lot of it with individual grasses in the brush too. So, All right. So that'll be it for tonight. We'll finish all that. So all we got left to do on this one this week after our cameo <laughs> is to uh, put these trees in on the right side so to start with uh, and everybody's might be a little different we we've kind of measured a little bit of kind of how far to go up but I know some people are higher some are lower you got to kind of feel how your little land mass over here is gonna fit the road in the uh, picture you can see it kind of looks like the road goes around it or the street or there, at least there's, there's leaves at the bottom of that I don't really care that if that happens or not. On mine, I think I want the land to start about here, mm -hmm. and the grasses and stuff will go up even higher, so it goes up over the edge of the road. Yeah. The trees come up from there, and I think I'm going to try to go down around like this angle, you know, out yeah. about right there. So, just going to be black. I'm going to make some black yeah. out of blue and brown. Yeah, I'm going to need a lot of it. So mm -hmm. Make a 
good bit of it. Making a little pile. This is my thick bristle, hard, stiff bristle fan brush. Uh, I'm just going to throw this in here. So I think I'm going to start about there. And let that come down about the same. You don't want it to be too straight down. It'll look weird. It'll kind of come down. But it don't need to be perfectly straight with the road either. That road don't need to be the same width all the way down. Yeah. So. so about in here. I'm just going to fill all that in. Um, then we'll go ahead and just kind of get some of this paint out of my brush and let the tips of this have some texture. Yeah. Just a little to start with. And I'll come back and put some more small stuff on there. Mm -hmm. So then we just need a couple more big trees. Let's see. Thicker liner brush. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've got. I'll probably use a liner for these little bits. So I don't want too many trees, and I don't want. This is not the subject. The point to the, these trees is just to um, make this light color go further back. So these yeah. trees are kind of skinnier than these over here. They're not the subject. Mm. And you're just going to start with. Start mm. with one here. That's probably about as thick as I want them to get. Mm -hmm. I don't want anything thicker than that. They, they are kind of going to lean in that way a little bit more, where the ones on the other side lean the other way. Yeah. Let me switch to my liner and a little bit more of this with the liner. Maybe one more. I will switch to the liner and do some little limbs and stuff on those. So for that, let me get the liner real quick. We'll just go ahead and go through this whole thing. My favorite one too. <laughs> this one's a little bit bigger than the tiniest one, but it still works real good. I don't want too many limbs and leaves, but I do want back in here, see how it kind of gets. Yeah. Kind of chaotic back in there. I like that. I'll let this one come up in front of that one a little. I have a lot more water in this brush to make that work. So just you know, some some nice shaky, chaotic looking limbs down here. Now I'm going to do a whole lot more of that. I'm gonna pull a few small ones. I may pull just a few. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Just a few. Yeah. You can do as little or, or as much of that as you want. That's no. <laughs> now, again, they get smaller as they go up, and you. I want to come back with uh, on the grass down here pull up some some taller grasses not get enough water in this paint <laughs> I want to pull up some taller grasses in front of this really light yeah. yellow yeah. that makes it look really good like that you can just do this quickly the faster you do these the mm -hmm. better and if they get little dots at the top that's okay too Where? That kind of thing. A couple little dots there. Um, so anyway, grass is at the bottom, trees with limbs. The last thing we'll do is come back and put some color in the very bottom edge of it where the, the uh, leaves are falling in the bottom there. But this is all silhouetted so it's all black. Um, just let's get that far and then we'll come back and do the, the so color stuff later. Um, last little bit of details. I'm going to make some, some leaf color. The thing about these leaves, I don't want them to be too bright because they are in shadow. I'm going to make them kind of brownish, ugly kind of brown mustard yellow. 
maybe even a little more brown. I'm just going to plant a few of these down here on the bottom, just to kind of indicate where the where the ground would be here. Just the same way we did before, just lay the brush down this way, tap a few in there, and then I'm going to do just a few lighter ones, just to vary the color a little bit. Not too many of the light ones. I don't want too much light over here. And then for variety, we might even make a even uglier, darker one. Won't show up too much, but it'll yeah. Like a chocolate milk. Yeah. Yeah, it works a little bit. Put some chocolate milk up in there. Throwing that in. There. <laughs> Last little details like that is is all that's really left to do. I may um. A couple things we might want to do as a final. One is this uh, really light highlight. If the light is shining through there the way that I want it to, you're going to get a little bit of it on the back side of these dark trees. I think just a hair. Um, Wouldn't it be on the other side? It's kind of the lights kind of come through. Okay. Coming down the road is kind of how I want it to be, but you're right. It could be on both sides, honestly. Yeah, you're right, though. Let's see. I think that's my Mine's on the other side. You don't protect me. I'm trying to throw it. I got you. I got January. She's got my back. She's taking it. I only wanted. They might throw us both out. I don't want When you upset the master, it's mine. It's more like the tree is the glow coming around the tree. Yeah. And you really could do it on both sides. I mean, see just a little bit of it. Mainly on this top tree. Let's do it on both sides on that one. Just a little bit on this one foreground tree here. I don't know. I don't know if I like it or not. Let's try it and see. I did mine in a gray instead of a yellow. I didn't want it to do that much. <laughs> really need to be super thin. Yeah, kind of like yeah. that. Not a whole lot. And you might have just a little bit that shows up in here. Yeah, I'm not doing too much of this in here. You have the light side over there. The light is casting over that side. And then in this, uh, the last thing is the same really bright color. It may drop some, some leaves. Some of these leaves down mm -hmm. here might be super bright, sort of more lit up because yeah. of that. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have enough color showing up, you know, even Just further back with some of the yellows. Yeah. Or oh, yellow I got them everywhere. To, I hadn't done that yet. I was waiting until the very end. Just to add a little leaves. character to it. Yeah. Yeah. But that's pretty much all I'm going to do. Sign that, sell it. I'm going to play with that highlight a little more because I still don't.